yours, as they say. What I would like to say, we all are, uh, but not only this time, we, we want to be, this generation or this civilization wants to be special in everything. You know, we always say that those who were before us, they, they didn't know anything. But I would like to invite you to Sarajevo, to Bosnia and Herzegovina, to see the pyramids that are discovered. And in these pyramids that are discovered, the, 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 the one who discovered, he said that even 5,000 years ago, that people knew better than we know what is there in the, in the heaven and in the sky and all this. But we, uh, this generation from so-called enlightenment and humanism and renaissance, we proclaim that everything that was before us is, is bad and history starts with us. But you know what I like about the, about the Quran, about the Prophet Muhammad Ali, he, when he came he didn't say all those who were be before me are wrong and I am the only right. On the contrary, he said, أَنَا مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ I am confirming of the truth that was before me. So the history does not start with me. It was before me also. So what I'm trying to say, all the time, in, in all generations, civilization, people had multiple identities. And we have multiple identities. So we have to live with this. I am, at the same time, a Muslim, a Bosniak, you know, ethnic, ethnically, Bosnian by the state. Hmm? I am European, and I am Azhari, and I am husband of my wife. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is my identity too. Huh? Sometimes people uh, better uh, know who I am when I say I am, uh, you know, husband of Azra, so they know who I am. Uh, in the in the past, for example. The, the wives were identified by their husbands, not, not by, their, by their names. So, we have all these kind of identities. It depends what, which one you want to emphasize. Which one is more, is, we, you have to have priorities. What is the prior, uh, priorities of these identities? Some would say, for me, it is the most important thing, Islam and Muslim. The other would say, my nationality. The, the, civilization, whatever. But what I would like to suggest to, to young uh, people, yes, you can have the choice and freedom to put your priorities, but remember all the time that all these identities are part of your whole. So you cannot give up on any of them. So it depends now how much you are of that and how much of this. But you are all together a personality that have to live with all these identities. So this is what I said to uh, my uh, Christian friends in Europe when we have a dialogue. I, all, I tell them, you complain against us Muslims because we are, you know, too much religious, you know? And, and you, they say, give me a break. I mean, you are praying five times a day. You talk only about religion. Can you talk about something else? And then I, then I said to the Christians, but you know, we complain about you because you don't talk about religion, religion at all. <laughs> you don't know anything about it. So, so we have a problem. So probably we should reduce a little bit, hmm? slow down, and probably they should, you know, learn and, and, and see what, what, we, what, we are, what we have to say. So the ignorance of, of, of each other is, is very dangerous. So what I would like in, in, in Bosnia, for example, on one time, we, we, we used to say for those who have two, who have fear of, of, of faith, you know, you have, so we, we were uh, measuring how much degree they have this fever of, of, of faith. It is too much. So this sometimes is not, even, even, even when you take too much uh, aspirin, dose of aspirin, it, it can damage you. So everything, God made us, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, I mean, this life is beautiful. This life is really beautiful. And we should enjoy it. And this is blessings of God. And if you are, if God, and then faith, faith is a gift of God. This is a gift. 
sometimes it happens to me, I don't know whether you, when I want to, you know, to show, it, it doesn't work. But sometimes when I am not very much, you know, I somehow I get pleased. So please, if with all your effort, you have to believe that there is their rahma that gives you this uh, uh, also relaxation. Don't be hard on other people if you are going to mosque, if you are going to, please leave, uh, give them chance. Probably they are not at that moment ready to go. So make it easier for them. Don't make it harder for them if your priority is religion. But also those who are not very much familiar with the religion, they want to impose uh, their views on others saying, why should you go to mosque? Why religion is useless? Why should you go there? Why don't you enjoy your life and so on? All right, I mean, I will dispute with him. But the problem is when one wants to impose his idea on the others by force, this is the problem. Whether it is religious or non-religious, this is why I am happy and proud to be a Muslim because we, I have it in the Quran. La ikrahe fitin. No compulsion in religion. But there is no compulsion in non-religion. You, uh, you cannot impose people not to believe, as we had in, in the previous times, state that was imposing unbelief, kufr or so. And then there is one saying of uh, uh, Imam Ali, which I like very much, which uh, who he said, radiallahu anhu, الملك يبقى مع الكفر ولا يبقى مع الظلم. Huh? The uh, how you say the government or the power, political power, may stay with infidels, but it cannot remain with injustice. So the principle of the of the security and peace and security in society is not how people believe and what believe and how they, but whether you are just to them, whether they have justice, whether they have their share, whether they have the equal chance to succeed in their life. If they have that, then this is what I would call, if you want me to call the real Islamic, let's say society and Islamic state, if you like. But I don't think that there is Islamic State. There is only uh, uh, Muslims who live and then they can create a just or unjust or equal or unequal society in which they live. So to answer to your question, yes, this problem of multi, uh, multiple identities is blessings on the one hand, but on the other hand may be confusing. But I, I believe that you as a good educator will help the, our youth to understand and to, to cope with that. And may God help you in that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I saw two hands at the back and then a friend here. Can I get to the gentleman at the back, please? Many travels to Sarajevo and Bosnia as a whole. Um, what I found, um, especially uh, with people who, who stayed back after the war, uh, the people who fought for Bosnia uh, from other countries, the, jih the jihadists, uh, who remain in Bosnia. Uh, they now have uh, become more conservative and probably follow the Islam, uh, what we call now the Salafis or the Wahhabism. How, in your role as a Mufti, um, have you tried to integrate them into the mainstream Islam? I, there are many individuals who came to Bosnia and Herzegovina during 92, to 3, 4, 5, from all, kind of all, all over the world, and among them Arabs, uh, who are, many of them are married with the Bosnian girls and they form the families. Uh, after the peace agreement in, in Dayton, there, there is one uh, clause that says that all foreigners who were in Bosnia and Herzegovina during the war and were engaged in war should leave the territory of Bosnia. That's the 
because the, there was not only the, the Arabs who came to help, let's uh, say, Bosnian Muslims, but there were Russians, for example, Greeks, uh, uh, Germans, if you, who helped uh, Serbs if you, and, and Croats and, and all so on. So when, when, you, when you have the peace agreement and you have uh, the war is over, so therefore uh, the uh, situation is different. The, the, the rule of the games are different. Now, uh, there are many uh, Arabs who came uh, as humanitarian activity, uh, activists who helped, uh, you know, orphanage uh, was very high and, and many other things. And by the way, I want to tell you very frankly, if it not were for the help from the Muslim countries, and I would, I did not, uh, uh, I mentioned Singapore also one of the countries that did help uh, in many ways the, the humanitarian efforts that we needed at the time. Even though Bosnia was not a humanitarian case, it was an aggression against a sovereign and independent state that was recognized by UN and so on. But we'll not go to this detail. So what, uh, if it not were for this help of the Muslim, uh, Muslims around the world, the Muslim countries, diplomatically in other ways, uh, we would not, probably I would not be with you today in Singapore. So thanks God and thanks to all the Muslim countries that helped Bosnia and Herzegovina. Otherwise, we would not be there. So it's very clear. You read the tapes that uh, were published by uh, President, former President Clinton and his uh, conversation with Mitterrand, who said we were never allowed a Bosnia or Muslims to um, almost to survive, even though, and he, he, he's mo the most responsible man for what happened or, and for the genocide in Bosnia in the international affairs, and not to say about others. But what I want you, I know what you mean. Uh, as uh, everywhere, in, in, uh, in the Muslim uh, societies and we, we have, we are faced with this phenomenon of a new interpretation of Islam that is unknown to us or at least strange to us. Uh, we have uh, some people who are revisists, if you like, who are uh, trying to re-examine and revise the whole idea of Islam. And they, do, they proclaim that what we are teaching and preaching and so on is wrong. So we have to change everything. We have to change. We, we, of course, they don't say we have to change the Quran, but somehow we have to change the way we pray, the way we look at things and so on. And these people are called, known as uh, people of takfir. Uh, the, the, who those who are, uh, uh, how you say, excommunicating others who are not of their particular view of Islam. We were faced in Bosnia as well. I don't know in Singapore how you are doing with this. In the, uh, uh, let's say, two or three years ago, it was very, very hard on us uh, coping with this uh, challenge. And there were some people who, uh, who, who said to me, I mean, they were writing on Facebook on that, not only that I am not Muslim, but you know, it is halal that uh, uh, my, my, my blood is halal for those who think uh, that uh, I, can, I am not a good Muslim. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, and, but, we did succeed to integrate them slowly. We did not uh, argue with them in the same manner, saying that you are not Muslims. And this is what uh, we, we were trying to put uh, the arguments based on our tradition, on the Quran and Sunnah, and uh, we still have this debate, and I think this debate will continue. And I think it's not the question of moderate and non-moderate. I don't like this uh, qualification. It is the question uh, that 
uh, we who represent Islam officially, who are in charge of Islamic affairs, must be active and must be a real representative of the aspirations of Muslims, of the normal. And this is why I am very glad to, to be shown and to be able to get in, inside of the Islamic community in Singapore with the president of uh, Mu'is, with the Mufti, with, with the minister, I went to school. And I must tell you, I am impressed uh, what, uh, by what I see saw here. And please continue. And let me, let me tell you, because you ask me how we do, uh, I, so I would, uh, I would invite you to come to see in Bosnia. But uh, to prove, to tell you uh, that Bosnia Herzegovina is, is working well, I would say, we have the uh, similar uh, tradition to invite these Muslim scholars uh, from outside to spend with us a uh, week and then we show them our madrasa. And I have, there was one visitor to Bosnia who is now uh, a, after revolution, he was uh, dissident from one Muslim country, I don't want to mention. So he lived in London and he came but he was Islamist in a real sense. And he believed that the state and uh, Dean and, and devil are the same. So he visited us, madrasas and everything and so on. And he saw how we are working in a, a relaxed way, the way similarly like you here. Everything is, you know, without artificially, uh, you know, and changing or adapting anything. You are just normal functioning, working. And then for him coming from this country, it was strange that there are no people who are supervising what we do to tell us what to do. We were doing on our own as we, as we know. And then he came to my house uh, for the dinner and he said, you know, my visit to Bosnia changed my view. I said, what? He said, now I realize it is good that the Islamic institution will be separated from the state. I see, very good. Thank you, you have to pay for this you know, lesson. <laughs> it's not free. So I, now he is in a big, big political figure in the Muslim post-revolutionary country. I don't want to mention because I don't want to embarrass him, but uh, I am very glad. I hope he will adapt now to his country to uh, to uh, work for a civil society in the Muslim countries, as they say. So in that sense, we are going to have the challenge. There are going to have people to challenge us all the time. And I welcome them to challenge. But also, they have to understand that I that accept the challenge, but I will win with my argument based on my Quran, on the Quran and the Sunnah. So, no revisal or revisionist view of our faith. You should be proud of your faith. God knows very well, and God knows what is in our heart. And no one is in charge to look what is in my heart. I know it. And God is the only one who created me. I belong to him. I don't belong to these people who are telling me that I'm not a good Muslim. I don't care what they say. And let me say, Never complain, never explain, but be as you are. Thank you. For the benefit of Shea, yes, we've been able to achieve um, things that we want to do in Singapore, but we also have our challenges. And we also take the same approach where we try and reach out to these people, to engage them, not to push them away, but to embrace them and change their minds. And to the gentleman that visited Bosnia, maybe you can ask him to visit Singapore for free. <laughs> Please, gentlemen. Sheikh Mustafa Cherich. Let me first introduce myself. Turkish ambassador, Shafak Kerturk. Siz de hoş geldiniz. I didn't understand that, but it's okay. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I have to say that uh, while listening to your enlightening statement, I felt as if a close relative was talking. Because 
your country is very much intertwined with my nation that are for those who may not know more than six million people of Bosniak origin or related to in Turkey this uh, figure is bigger than the population of Bosnia combined the second sir you are a hero for us because your name had become a household name during those tumultuous and uh, terrible days of Bosnia in early 90s. Well, I uh, felt that I had to say just a few words as Turkey's name came up when uh, the alternatives uh, were floated by you, Dr. Cherich, in the aftermath of what the mainly Muslim nations went through in the more recent part of our long history. As you have brought to our attention once again in the teaching of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught us that we need no intermediary in our communion with God. This is probably one of the most distinctive aspects of Islam among the revealed religions. And this brings us directly to the second major point that you made in your statement and that is guys use your mind God has given you the intelligence and you have to make the right choices for your own and for your society's good well this is precisely how we also understand secularism as you have rightly pointed out, the Turkish example came with sacrifice. Well, uh, what doesn't? On the other hand, we also came of age. This does not necessarily mean that there are two different distinct models at hand that you should go for one or the other, or there is a gray area in between them. Secularism is a legal term to start with. It is about your rights and obligations as an individual and vis-a-vis -vis your society. Should we, at any point, looking at all the distinguished guests here today and outside this conference room, say that just by virtue of their religious denomination, one section of people have different rights and obligations from the other religions. I think the world has gone, it covered enough distance that the discussion on this is already moot. Then, of course, the big discussion about where Muslims and the Muslim societies stand given their uh, recent record, not so bright ones. Well, what I would say is that is, uh, this will be in reinforcement of what uh, the third message, as I quote it, uh, you gave in your statement, and that is, instead of trying to have others accept us just by virtue of we are Muslims, so we have to take it into account, we have to come up with our virtues, abilities, and prove them that they are, we are strong people, Muslims. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, uh, for... Uh 
coming to our lecture and also uh, we appreciate, I think that uh, Minister uh, uh, Ibrahim would agree with me that we are very honored that uh, Ambassador of Turkey uh, has the need or he so appropriate to take share in our discussion. Thank you very much. This gives us uh, encouragement and uh, hope that the that Turkey, which we call uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina our mother, uh, will continue to be a good model for others. Uh, we have the mother, but uh, I hope we will have father as well <laughs> in Turkey. So for your information, thank you very much for uh, giving me a chance to say and to thank you that you opened the uh, direct flight from Istanbul to Singapore so that I don't need to go uh, uh, the other, other, other way. And by the way, I am uh, leaving uh, <coughs> Singapore tomorrow night, inshallah, and uh, I'll be in Istanbul uh, six morning and at 10 o'clock uh, I have appointment with uh, uh, your Prime Minister uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the next day with the President of Turkey. You see how, how lucky I am uh, meeting here in Singapore the President and the Prime Minister and two Prime Ministers and immediately going to Ankara to meet the Prime Minister and the President of uh, Turkey. So you should uh, be envious of me, I, I guess. <laughs> So thank you. Uh, uh, yes, I, I don't. I, don't, uh, I think uh, you are perfectly all right. And if I may add, just uh, for the clarification, uh, we have this uh, uh, sec in the Muslim countries, Muslim, uh, especially ulama, some conservative ulama. We have secular, secular phobia, secularophobia. You know. Whenever you mention secular, you know you are afraid. And but uh, secularism, secularism. If any religion can be described to be closest to the idea of secularism, it is Islam. And now, don't don't tell to others that I said to you this. <laughs> How, why? Because secular means coming out from the. Uh, framework of the church mentality or the church world. This is coming out to the to the dunya and to to get involved in the world affairs. This is secularism. So Islam, we are told in the Quran, don't forget the the world affairs. So you have to be get you have to be out on the street in the souk, the market. You have to be you have the businessman. And you have to pray on the street on Paris, all as well, <laughs> as ne if necessary. I mean, we are not closed. We are not. I am not a monk. I am married. I have two children. I, I have all problems as you do. I am not. You know, I am not somebody that is that that is holy. I am not holy. I am just like you and anybody else. And the Prophet Muhammad didn't want that people look at him. Uh, as uh, you know, as an angel, he was telling them, "I am eating and sleeping and doing all things that you are doing." So we are human beings. So when we talk about secularism, I want to explain what is the confusion is there that some people introduce secularism as anti-religion, as anti-God, uh, and some, unfortunately, we have the communism who did take this secularism in such a way. And communism destroyed itself and secularism because, you know, the most dangerous people of, of any ideology or group or religion are the people who are of that religion ideology. Communism was not destroyed from outside. It was the, uh, collapsed inside by corruption, bribe, and of course misconceptions. Mis, uh, so I want to say to my Muslims, the most dangerous people for Islam are not outside. It is inside. Those who are misunderstand and misrepresent and so on. So secularism uh, has bad reputation because of the secularists, not because of us. Because they did not up, uphold the values, the principles of secularism in the sense 
that secularism has two meanings, metaphysical and political. We cannot accept secularism metaphysically if there is no God there. So that's the, that we reject. But politically, it is acceptable, not only acceptable. This is the only way that we can uh, organize society and the state. If we understand secularism in a political sense to be a division of labor, division of responsibility, we have to know who is responsible for what. There are politicians who are responsible for this, and there are religious people who are responsible for that. So no uh, intervention and no uh, interference in the uh, uh, affairs of, of, uh, of this Ajir. So, and we have uh, these two, uh, two concepts of secularism. One is a French concept, which tells interference of the state into religious affairs and not allowing that religious institution be independent. And you we have another secularism which is of American type, which is based, because I was imam in Chicago for five years and I know this, I can testify, that state has no right to interfere in church business, in, in the mass business. So we want this kind of secularism, yes, in Muslim countries. Give us a freedom so that we can develop our Islamic institutions on their own. And the state should not interfere in our affairs, except to give us money that we can survive, <laughs> like you do in Singapore. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, in Singapore, we do interfere, not to destroy, but to create it to be even more innovative and better. That's why we have ways, basically. This is permissible. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, can I invite the next? Uh, I see a lady's hand. I saw a hand at the back just now. Okay, one, two. Can I ask the lady here first? Oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't see. Gentleman over there. Yes, he was standing. After that will be the lady. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Nuzulul Qadar bin Abdullah. I'm a student of International Islamic University, Malaysia. Uh, I personally have a few uh, friends from Bosnia. They are very well-mannered and knowledgeable students. Well, now I understand where do they get that from. It's due to you. Uh, they are Mufti and we are very pleased to have you here. Well, um, you've been talking about tolerance. So my question is, uh, to what extent should we be tolerant? As in, personally, I've been to some interfaith dialogues. I see more acceptance rather than tolerance. So is tolerant acceptance? Uh, and secondly, you were talking, highlighting about the weak uh, Muslim politicians. So, um, uh, can you shed some light on what actually is the role for our Muslim politicians or what can we or what should we expect from our Muslim politicians? Thank you. Let me take this last question. I mean, uh, but uh, you have to be patient with me. Uh, and. Uh, let, let me tell you what is the difference between politician, priest, and journalist. <laughs> All right? And I, I, this, this is not my creation. I mean, I, I've heard it from somebody else, but I will not tell you where, from whom. <laughs> they say that politician doesn't know how to tell the truth. <laughs> okay? The priest is supposed that he doesn't know how to tell the lie. This is what how they say. And the journalist is the one who doesn't make, doesn't know how to make the difference between the two. <laughs> All right? This wisdom, if you like it, you can take it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I would, uh, I would not uh, like to, uh, I, I don't want to spend time on politicians because uh, they say that uh, average life uh, and uh, length of life are short, uh, the shortest in journalists because they live very stressed, uh, under stress all the time. And the longest living uh, professionals are priests and politicians. <laughs> you know, the priests because they have this spiritual um, tranquility hmm? and they live in a peace and, and spirit. 
And politicians live long because they have motivation to stay as long as they can. <laughs> so, how, how it is, uh, this is really a story. I, I know, I know from, from inside, if you like. For example, those, great, uh, the big centers for political planning of the world, of the global issues, they are very much interested about the health of presidents, prime ministers, how, what they eat, where they go, how they going to, what is the mood of them, you know, because they have to plan who will come after them. So there was one politician whom doctors say that he will die in six months because of the cancer. But then he, did not, he didn't die after six months. And then this, those who were asking doctors, they came to doctors and say, but you inform us that he's, he will live only six months and we prepare everything for the next prime minister. What are we going to do now? <laughs> and then doctors say, you know, you never predict about politicians. <laughs> they, can, they can survive impossible. So our predictions or diagnosis was wrong. Hmm? I, I'm just telling you that if you have a motivation, you know, and drive to, to work and so on, and, and the politicians are those people who do. And without these people, uh, without this kind of people, it would be very difficult uh, to, to run the society. Why? Because I read an interview with the uh, Dalai Lama of uh, uh, Tibet, a long, uh, and he, he, a Western journalist visited him in his office and he was following him every day what he was doing. And then at the end of, of his journey that lasted months, I don't know, he asked Dalai Lama uh, about, okay, but what you are doing? I mean, what, what is your philosophy? And Dalai Lama answered to him, you know,